The purpose of this experiment was threefold. First, I wanted to validate an apparatus for getting high-speed video in zero gravity. My first and much more informal attempt on a tourist zero-g flight suffered from lighting and deployment problems. Second, I wanted to test methods for deploying liquids and try and come up with a method that would give decent results given the short duration of the zero-g segments. And finally, I wanted to find out how difficult it would be to track the deployed liquids as they floated around to compensate for errors in the deployment. This first device uses a baby soda bottle to store the water and a soda repressurization pump to force the water out of the bottle through a small tube. The baby soda bottles and pump came from stevespanglerscience.com and the tubing and valve are common parts available at any decent hardware store. This device generated pretty decent results for small drop sizes, though it was tricky to operate because almost all of the action of the pump came at the end of the stroke and because I had to operate it one-handed. You can also see that I'm having some problems learning how to properly maneuver the apparatus to track the drops. Given that I have one hand operating the deployment device, the other trying to move the box, and I'm trying to stabilize myself using my feet on a Velcro strap, I'm quite task saturated. One thing to keep in mind about such experiments is that while objects floating in mid-cabin are in microgravity, Objects attached to the actual aircraft are subject to residual g-forces, as the pilots cannot fly a perfect parabola, and there is inevitable atmospheric turbulence. This is why, when given the chance between doing this experiment strapped to a seat or semi-free floating, I chose the latter. I was also swayed by my previous attempt, which was done seated. However, it proved very difficult to stabilize and track the water, whether I was velcroed to the strap, had my feet tucked through it, or even with a zero-g coach lending a hand. On the final set of parabolas, when I tested diet soda and mentos in zero-g, I took the parabolas seated and got much better results. It was much easier to track the liquids, and they did not wander outside the limits of my reach. So a big lesson learned for these kind of experiments is that you need to be strapped down in order to do them most effectively. It also greatly reduces the task load. Oh yes, if you're wondering whether or not you're going to see diet soda and mentos in this video, you won't. That's the subject of a follow-up video. On a side note, to help me maneuver and stabilize my feet, I built myself a set of Pan Am grip shoes, similar to those seen in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. They were a complete failure. In this case, at least, life does not imitate art. This second device is a ketchup squeeze bottle filled with sponge. The idea is that the wide mouth will let me deploy bigger globes of water, and the sponge will slow the flow rate of the water and provide more control. I wonder how it'll work. In case you're wondering what those things are at the bottom of the video, 
those are the pads of my LRDs, the liquid recapture devices, or as most people call them, disposable diapers. Now here's an idea that I thought would work, but didn't for some reason. It's simply a cube of sponge sealed on five sides by duct tape and soaked in water. For some reason, however, I didn't deploy any, so I quickly went to plan B. I may not have loaded it with water correctly. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm sort of running out of water, and I'm getting more air in the mix than I would have liked. This is a very serious video, otherwise at this point I would have inserted an obligatory Borg cube joke. This is the most complicated deployment device I've built. It consists of five baby soda bottles with rubber stoppers connected by tubes to a plenum, itself another baby soda bottle, which has a feed tube that runs outside of the apparatus. By uncorking one tube at a time and blowing into the feed tube, I can deploy the water. At this point, I took a bit of a hard landing transitioning from microgravity to the 1.8G pull-up phase of the parabolas, and the macrophotography light ring partially detached from the camera. Fortunately, I'd independently attached it to the box, so it didn't cause too much of a problem in subsequent sequences. Thank you. 